<laughs> oh, well, hello there, you sexy siblings. Siblings, because, you know, we're all related at some point down the line. Depends on what you believe in. But we're back with another podcast. My rod is fully pushed. This is an awesome podcast. You guys will be stoked on it. Look at my knuckles. If you can't see it, you can just hear it. They're all banged up from punching people. Big MMA fight coming up at the end of the month. Yeah, end of August. So I'm stoked on that first one. Amateur fight in the books. This is a podcast is with Bella, Bella Bacon. Super dope podcast. This chick has been literally killing it um, all year. I actually first knew her at Mount St. Louis when she was just getting into park skiing. Not just getting, she was just getting into park skiing. Yeah, she was pretty new into it. Uh, she's gone on this year. She filmed the faction movie, went to level one super unknown. She's on the U.S. national ski team. She's been competing in World Cups. Probably got some of the best style out there for girls. If not, I would say the best style out there for girls at the moment. Bella's an all-around superstar. Super sick girl to talk to. This podcast is a banger. Hope you guys enjoy it. Little audio issues. I don't know if my editor Hayden fixed it, but it was my fault. You know, I'm not the te- most tech-savvy guy ever, you know? I'm just, I'm just really not. But Hayden, he deals with my bullshit and uh, makes these episodes as good as we can for you guys. So I'm really, really stoked. Uh, on that and look at that baby that leads us into a perfect intro for our first sponsor of the podcast uh lucas bees man this dude has made guys if you're awful at making videos like me my video editing skills are trash i use imovie cut and slap things together i have no clue what color grading is any of that stuff but if you guys want to take it to the next level and you guys want to get into color grading but you don't want to do the work you want to get all those nice shots that look super sick and you don't want to do the work and you want to have it done professionally look great my man lucas made a bunch of presets he's done a bunch of filming for really big skiers and made some really awesome ski content you guys can check out his social media at luca bees on instagram guys the dude puts out some insane content and uh, it looks really good and if you guys want your videos to look as good as his and you want to do it easily i got a link down below for you you can use the code bruce oldham on checkout i know you guys get up to 20 percent off which is super sick and I also get some commission on the side as well. So you're helping out the podcast. Go check it out if you're ever looking for presets for your content. Your skiing content specifically, but it doesn't have to be skiing content. Amazing presets. One last thing, lads, before we dive into this podcast. I'm really, really excited about this. Uh, and you guys should be too. Uh, this year, I'm going to be coaching a limited amount of people in skiing. If you guys think you want to be coached by me or anything like that, let me know. I'm currently planning on having everything available and having it all set up for the end of September and we'll dive on in right into the winter season. So if you guys wanted to get coached by me, just DM me on Instagram, we can talk about it, we can set up a call and I can go over like kind of what I'm planning on doing through it and how I wanna help you guys out because I'm really good at coaching, just I don't usually have time for it, but I think the way I'm gonna do it, I'll have time to coach and help a lot of people out. So I'm stoked on that, but there's only a limited amount of people I can take on because otherwise I just literally can't like ski, train, MMA myself. So that's gonna be exciting. But yeah, if you're interested in having me as your coach this season, message me on Instagram, I'll go through them all set up a call if you guys want to talk call and talk about it everything will be set up end of september and i want to know what you guys are having a lot of trouble with uh, in terms of progressing in skiing and stuff like that whether it's a sponsorships whether it's b just hitting jumps properly or rails or anything like that i'm going to cover all that um, but i want to hear specifically what are the things that you guys are really struggling with and then i can work on making sure i hit all those and fixing them so you guys will let me know uh, in the dms on instagram if you guys are interested and you have anything that you think i can help you with uh in skiing and now, with that being said, let's dive into this episode of the podcast. I look sexy today. I had my first offer, guys. Listen, quickly, quickly. First offer for a sugar moment today. So I'm probably going to be taking that up. If there's any other ones out there listening to this podcast and I don't know what my face looks like, it's pretty cute. But my audio is just as good, baby. So, uh, yeah, let's get that money. Welcome, creatures of all shapes and sizes, to Banged Up with Bruce Oldham, a.k.a. The Kid. This is an action sports podcast the likes of which the world may never have seen before and may never see again. I hope you guys enjoy. Yo, what's up? Yo! Hey, how you doing? It's been so long. One sec, I'm trying to set everything up here. This, sorry I was late. This has been like, uh, kind of a little last minute hectic. No, you're all good. You're all good. Dude, it's been, like, way, way too long. We haven't, like, I mean, I guess we never really talked too, too much back in the day, but, like, man, like, you moved off to the U.S. team, like, a while ago, and I haven't seen you or, like, heard of you much since, so it's really sick to have you on the podcast. I'm stoked. Yeah, for sure. I'm so stoked to be talking up here. <laughs> it's an honor, really. <laughs> really? Honor? I don't know if i go that far. I just got back from painting. I barely got my stuff, like, set up in time, and I was, like, running around and dealing with Cody and all of his nonsense. Oh, shit, yeah. 
are you painting? Um, we got a new place here in Quebec. Me, Megs, and everything else. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, it, it needs a. Uh, it needs quite a bit of work, as you can see. My hair is getting almost not like as long as yours, but it's pretty gross at this point. I don't know. <laughs> no, what to, my hair is a move. I don't know what to do with it. I need some. <laughs> I need some professional advice at this point. But yeah, it's a. Uh, it's getting out of hand, and I just threw the camera up and everything. But we're set up and we're rolling. So hell yeah. Oh yeah. I'm stoked. Um, for people that don't know you, uh, this is Bella. Me and Bella. Um, I wouldn't say we go back a long ways, but kind of almost like. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> honestly, yeah, it's been like like quite a bit. Like, started skiing at Mount St. Louis when I first saw you. I've been on. Was I? I don't think it was still on Jeff. Maybe it was my first year on Jeff's team when you were there. Like, I was on Jeff's team way before, and then I went to Ontario team, and then Jeff came back and coached the Ontario team for the one year, and that was the year you were on it, right? Yeah, I think I did in 2018. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so I think we were on the same team that year. And uh, honestly, I know your story a little bit, but not the full thing. Like, from my understanding, like, where you're from New York ish area, right? Yep. Yeah. Western New York. <laughs> it's not a great spot for a skier, to be honest. No, not really. But it was nice. Like, that stuff. And yeah. it was, like, super chill. Yeah. Like, I Like, that was so much fun. It's such, like, and stuff. Yeah, for sure. And, but yeah, so from my understanding, like you came from there and you drive, you're skiing at Mount St. Louis, right? At the time, which, how far is that for you? From New York. Yeah. Three and a half hour drive. It was super chill. I love to drive, honestly. <laughs> Wait, sorry, one more time. How long was that? It was like three and a half hours. Oh, that's not that bad. I thought it was way worse than that. Oh no, it was super chill. I love to drive. Yeah, that's chill then. Never mind. But anyways, either way, it's pretty far. And like, not not super far, but pretty far. And I don't know about you, but Mount St. Louis is still my favorite home hill. Always will be. Been to some pretty sick hills, but I, dude, I can't, Mount St. Louis, nothing beats it for me ever. Mm-hmm. Mm. Man, I missed it. Uh, miss, missing doing laps. Yeah, for sure. Like, Junkyard this year was... Pretty insane. I don't know if you heard it or saw it or like saw. I guess you probably saw some videos from it, but they didn't build the Outback this year, so no big jumps. No, not at all. Because COVID, they just totally just deleted the Outback, but they threw all the big. Yeah, yeah, I know it was a bummer, but they threw all the big rails, um, some of the bigger rails into the junkyard, and the junkyard was literally packed. Like there was a there was probably like I think like sixty features in the junkyard. There was a feature on almost like literally like every like area of the junkyard was covered. So it was really fun, but. Uh, Nothing too too big, and uh, yeah. But where you're in Park City right now, right? Mm-hmm. So do you have a? Yep. Exactly like a year ago from today. You moved there, <laughs> yeah? Yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. So are you living by yourself then? Nah, my whole family actually moved, but my oh, brother's okay. still back in New York. But he's actually visiting right now. No. Nice. Family- so your whole nice. family got a place in in Park City, and now yeah. you're in Park City natural, and you're on the U.S. ski team. Congratulations. For- that's a, that's an order. That's a big step. I remember when you were just saucing yourself at Louis, and now here you are. So it's super, super, yeah. super sick to see. I appreciate it. Moving up. Everybody's moving up. It's kind of crazy how fast, like, all the skiers and everybody, like, kind of move on. But, yeah, no, it's really sick to see that. So this is your first year in Park City or second? Um, first full year. First full year. Okay, yeah. Because you had gone there to ski and stuff before, like but never, like, spent a whole season there. How was it? I yeah. Pretty good? Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, definitely not what I thought. Like, it was still so sick. Like, mm-hmm. like every day. <laughs> it was super. But, yeah, definitely miss Louis a lot. And yeah. all those people. It was definitely, like, really sick. Yeah. I, like, for what me, if, I don't know about you, but, like, when I first went to Park City was last season because we had a comp test at Woodward. I think you were in that one. And I got a day, like, we did big air in the morning then, like, ditched and then, like, went road Park City and nobody checked us for passes, so we just, like, went up. It was so funny because, like, literally, I think I might have told this story on the podcast before, but my first lap ever at Park City, you watch all the Park City edits, you get so hyped, like... I think of, like, as a kid growing up, I was told, like, the mountain is, like, the entire mountain's a park. So that's what I'm expecting. I get there. Um, but first chairlift, I literally, like, come into the lift line, 
don't have a pass, so I'm hoping I don't get checked. And literally right in front of me is Simon Dumont and Tom Walsh. The, like literally the guys in the chair, chairlift in front of me, like my two favorite childhood skiers, chairlift Wait. right in front of me. Yeah, it was insane. And it was like, I guess it was that day they were filming their, uh, their edit. But like, it was just such a random day for me to pull up and then be the first two people I saw at Park City. And uh, I rode it and Park City is super sick, but it's a lot smaller than I, I thought. I know, me too. It's kind of crazy. Mm. Like, totally did not, like, I don't know, did not compare to what I thought, but still super sick. And, like, I, and stuff, and all the, like, yeah. having, like, riders and stuff. It's like, see, like you said, like, a chair head, like, it's super insane, like, and going. Yeah, it's crazy. And, like, like you said, like, it's, it's super weird. But, I, like, I thought I got there, and I was like, I thought the park was way bigger. It's, like, not, it's not, like, it's, like, the size of, like, I would say the outback almost just a little differently, but like even all those rail sections and everything, um, you know, the big rail section at the bottom where you, there's all the challenge rails and stuff like the main rail section. Yeah. I thought that was like, it's like really flat in there. Like it's hard to get speed for a lot of the features. Like I, I got there. I'm like, what the shit? <laughs> like if I mess up one thing or if I don't land perfect, I can't make speed for the next rail sometimes, but it's so I, cool. <laughs> yeah. I remember the first time I skied there was last, because I was there, like, I was there three years ago, I think. Yeah. But, like, I ACL and I couldn't ski and whatever. Yeah. But um, it's cool to be last year with the first time skiing. Look at that. Killing bugs on the podcast. <laughs> Hell yeah. Nice. Cody's been leaving the door open, so they're flying in. But, um, yeah, it was, like, it was kind of, like, raining. Like, I didn't have speed, like, when we it's very interesting for experience, but yeah. yeah. No, I totally get that. I always thought like the two big like um, what are the div names for the jumps? The two big jumps or the two jumps? I don't know. Honestly, I'm not sure. <laughs> Either way, I always thought those jumps were like way bigger than they were, and I got there and I was like a little underwhelmed by them. But it was like, yeah. wait, when were you there? Um, like Woodward last year. Maybe it was a little smaller at that point in the year, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, the PC jump was not like super big this year, but like at the end of the year, like, it was like pretty, pretty big. Yeah, because like where the um, because the PC jumps like the middle line, like there's the rail line to the right, the middle line where the jumps are, and then you can go <laughs> left. And I I've seen videos of jumps on that left run at one point that looked really big at one year. So. Dang. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um. So yeah, I guess. Um, for people that don't know who you are, let's hear your story. I, I'd be more interested to do it. Like, I have no clue how you like actually got into skiing and stuff. Cause like, from my understanding, you're the only one that skis in your family, right? Mm, actually, all of my family skis. Um, but my dad's no, not park I, or anything. Uh, my brother does a little bit of park, but he definitely didn't get me into it. Yeah. Um, but my dad was a big snowboard every day, big heli porter. Okay. <laughs> He's a baller. He's, oh, taking, yeah. he's taking some sick pictures for me back in the day. He used to come, he'd come to drop you off at skiing, and then he'd set up with his camera and take pictures and hang out. And I'd always like check my DMs the next day, and there'd be like three or four sick pictures of me and shredding around through. I was like, oh hell yeah, hell yeah, that's dope. <laughs> Miss those days, my good. Yeah. So he kind of got you into it, or like you just started going to the hill with um, your family and stuff, and they like you just eventually got into park. Um. So I did moguls for a really long time. Ah, uh, yes, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, I was, like, nine, and I was, like, oh, my God, I'm so hard in the moguls. Like, I want to go to the Olympics for this. But then it kind of got to the point, like, kind of boring. Yeah. And I think, or the park. Um, and, yeah, I just pulled into it, and I think that's mainly what, like, made me, like, try to be, like, oh, these people are into it, like, I I want to, like, get into it. Yeah. Sick. So what age did you start skiing park at? Because, like, from my understanding, you were pretty young. Like, you were, like, you're pretty, like, you weren't, like, super young, but you're, like, on the younger side of getting, like, into park skiing. Like, for me, I didn't get into park skiing until I was 17. So, like, on that on that side of things, like, you're a lot a lot younger age than, like, when yeah. I started. So it's probably, like, what what age did you start? Like, what, what age, how old were you when you got Louis shredding? Um... I think I was 13 when I went. I yeah. think I started 12, like about to turn 13. Yeah. And I went with Momentum, and then I saw Sean, and she was like, yeah, 
I think that's how agenda happened. Yeah, and then you started coming down the agenda. And then was it that first year on the team that you tore your ACL? Because that's a pretty big injury. So that was at, like, what age? Like 14, 13? Yeah, I think I um, just turned 14. 14, wow. Work night. Yeah, get me fired up and his red was Yeah. Dude. <laughs> um, and, yeah, I didn't have much air back then. No, you're just tossing yourself into a big old cork nine on the jump. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Those are the days, man. That's how I learned to ski. Like, I would go to Louis with my friends. Like, you know, you met Tamaj, and maybe you met Tamaj? I don't know. Anyways, there's only like two or three of us that ever skied from Perry Sound, and we were all just really, really loose. We're just really loose people. And we go to the ski, he'll be like, hey, if you do a cork nine, I'll try a misty. None of us had any clue what we're doing. And we just get, we just show up after school and just get bodied all night <laughs> and then go the next day. And like, it was kind of how it worked. Luckily, I didn't get injured, but like, or too badly, but um, it's pretty crazy. Like, so that's a young age to get uh, ACL surgery. And that was like probably a full year. Yeah. Um, it took me 10 months to get back on snow. And, like, holy shit. Yeah, yeah, it was long. But honestly, like, I was at that young of an age where, like, I had so much motivation and just, like, drive mm -hmm. and, like, positive experience. And I think if I did it, it wouldn't be a positive experience. It wouldn't be the same. Yeah, it wouldn't be as fast of a recovery. I could see that, yeah. Because yeah, you would about other things. So how old are you right now? I'm 17. 17, okay, yeah. So definitely not as young. And, like, now you got – are you still doing high school and stuff? Yep, I'm doing the winter school at City and – <laughs> nice. I, a month ago, I think. Nice. And I, I like doing school in the summer. Yeah. I think it. It goes by fast, and honestly, like if you're on a ski team, especially like something like the U.S. ski team or whatever, like you're like you're pretty busy in the summer, like in terms of like you're not really gonna be hanging out with your friends as much, anyways. And yeah, like, exactly. Just making sure this still works nice, and uh, <laughs> yeah, like you're still going through like. Like, uh, you're still, uh, you still moved to a new place, like, not too soon. So I don't know, like, how many, like, it's hard to meet new people, especially when you move at this age and you're busy all winter and stuff and you're not in an actual high school. So, For like, real. your summer, like, realistically, like, you're going to be skiing, maybe have a couple friends and, like, you're going to be, you have time to work on school and stuff. So it works well just for what you're doing. And, like... Man, like you've had a like you've had a pretty busy year this year. Like you've been done a lot of comps. You did a bunch of sick things. Um, I actually got a lot of recognition, which I'm stoked to finally see because that's been that's been a long time coming. Like I remember back at Louis, you were doing rail tricks, and I was like, God damn, like that's super sick. And like nowadays, people like are starting to catch on to that and notice like like damn, this chick has some really sick sick moves and stuff. And it's, it's really dope to see. Um, I think personally, I'm going to contribute that to skiing at Mount St. Louis, just because that's what I want to contribute to love Mount St. Louis. And there's a lot of sick rails there. And you kind of just like slapping the junkyard. Like for me all the time, I found it figured out a lot of rail trick, rail trick things and stuff like that. Like I worked park staff last year. I spent like six days a week, like just lapping park, like, or lapping junkyard. And like my rails got so much better. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, it's super sick to see that. And you're bringing, like, a lot of style to, uh, to the girl side of skiing, which I think is something that needs to happen. I'm very <laughs> stoked on that. That's, it's really sick. And uh, got a lot of recognition for that, too, which is super dope. So uh, I, I'm stoked to see it. I've seen, like, a lot, of, a lot of sick things, like, happen, like, out of your like Especially uh, content-wise this year. You, had, you did a couple comps, right, this season? or? Yeah, I did my first World Cup. Super fun. Yeah, where was that? Um, it was Aspen and then okay. Silver Plana. Okay, so you did two this year, yeah. Nice. And those were interesting, overwhelming, or what was it like for the first time? Um, yeah, Aspen one was kind of overwhelming, like because it was like the the qualifier, or whatever. Yeah, it's a big event to jump right into it. Yeah, and I was just kind of like trying to like be focused and like just like do good, but which is never my mindset. Like in that, yeah. just like trying. To, good basically kind of just like made me do really yeah that mindset is normally just like have fun just like go with the flow and like <laughs> better usually and yeah i was gonna say you seem like the seem like the person that's like you're gonna ski a lot better when you're out there having fun like vibing to music or whatever just like and just cruising cruising and doing what you want to do right and mm -hmm. Um, some people like are able to focus in and lock in on that calm mindset. Some people like it's just like it's just not the right vibe. So it depends. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's super sick. And then, like for a first big event, you probably do want to come in focused and stuff like that. But like you got like yeah. so much time to like 
figure it out over the next couple of years, which is super exciting. And um, then Silva Plana, how was how was that one? It was really sick. Um, definitely one. Of the course was interesting, but um, after yeah, because they had that half pipe in the like on the turn. Yeah, yeah. and I'm not very good at that. Join really. <laughs> the, the club. I'm not very good at that either. Yeah, yeah. it yeah, pretty, pretty, but yeah, the, like all right. But then I stayed next year and I filmed the factory movie, and that was like I think that was the fun. Do you want to like, talk about that? Because that sounds insane. So we've uh, all we've all seen the faction movie. We've all like seen the faction movies, heard the faction movies, watched the faction movies. I'm trying to keep my hair under control. It's getting in my eyes. I haven't. I had a hair elastic at one point, but I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna be caught on like on camera with a man bun. Not not yet. It's not happening. What? Got the man bun. <laughs> no, not not yet. It's not time for that yet. Anyways, um. Yeah, so you got so you did Silver Planet, and then you stayed an extra week, and you filmed for the Faction movie. This year, it'll be released this summer. Yeah. Uh, late fall. Like late September. fall, yeah, that makes sense. And was it at Silver Planet that they filmed it, or? Yeah, for much. Yeah. Is that the is that the I don't know the hills out there. I have never been to Europe. Imagine that. I'm actually really disappointed in myself. That's why I'm just sitting here crushing a brew. Oh, so I painted all day, and I'm over it. So. <laughs> Yeah, next time you'll be super stoked when you go there, man. It's super sick. Dude, the jumps there looked huge. They looked like they were massive. Yeah, man. They were huge. They looked like 100 plus foot jumps. What's that? They looked like 100 foot jumps almost. Or like you could take them that big. I like it. (laughs) Yeah, I bet it did. So anyways, filming with the Faction movie. Like, what was was that about? Like, what was it like? What was, uh, what'd you guys do? Who was all there? Like... I want to hear more about that. That's really sick. That's a cool, cool experience. Yeah, I think it was like the best, one of the best weeks of my life, honestly. Really fucking sick. I was, I felt like I was with the sickest girls like in the industry or in the world. Or For um, sure, yeah. Some of the girls that were, or all the girls there were Sandra, Sandra um, Matilda, Sarah, Eileen, Argo. I hope I'm not forgetting if we are, if she's misforgetting anybody, we're sorry, and we apologize in advance. We yes. love you. I love you. And I actually am single right now, so if any of those girls, Eileen Gu, you slide my way. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, no, that's super sick. So was it It was more than just the girls, though. It was the guys, too, right? Nope, it was just the girls again. Oh, so it was just a girls shoot. Are they doing a girls movie and a guys movie, or just a girls film this year? Or are they going to put I mean, it all together? Um, I'm pretty sure after we left, the guys came, and then okay. they did it after us. Um, I think they're having separate ones, or that would make the most sense, I think. But, yeah, either way, that's super sick. So that, yeah. that'll be cool. They've never done that before, have they? I think they did last time. Uh, just the solo girls part? Yeah, the collective part. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Because they, they've come out with, like, uh, they're starting to do more of that stuff, or they're starting to be more females doing that in the industry, like, where they're, like, putting out their own um, own movies. Like just yeah. female skiers only, which has been super sick to see. So I'm I'm really excited to see this. You guys are gonna you have to let me know when it comes out. I mean I'm sure <laughs> I'll see it, but like if there's a pre-release, I want in. Um, but yeah. So what did you guys film? Did, did you do any backcountry at all, or like? Um no, just uh, park. Just park. Yeah, it was crazy because I was so tired. Then my whole life. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> but I'm really stoked that I got up. Um, that I did. I'm pretty surprised. That's how tired I am. But just like chilling with all the girls and just like like upbeat vibe. Having girls do tricks girls have never done before. Like so sick to see and like. So um, am I going to watch this and I'm going to see some tricks that I haven't seen girls do before? I'm excited. I'm really excited. Nice. Uh, what was the best trick you did there? Uh, Draw, drop a little leak. <laughs> What what is the best <laughs> trick we're gonna see out of Bella from the trick? Um, I think two P four was my second best trick, and oh. death so hard. Um, nose butter, kind of like I don't know, pre- I don't know the way that before the boards. God damn, that hard man. <laughs> so you were lighting up the rails. Did you bat- <laughs> did you have to battle those ones out? Those ones took a couple tries. Bad couple days, man. <laughs> a couple days. Ooh, yeah. those are the best. Those are so satisfying when you get them when you battle a trick for so long. Yeah. And like the best skiing, honestly, it's so like satisfying. I think that's my favorite part of skiing. Like, I mean, obviously landing like a comp run, it feels like 
like I'm not a comp jog. I like competing because I'm a very competitive person. Um, mm-hmm. Landing a comp run that you've been working on and you've been doing for a while feels really satisfying. But almost more than that, like pick a trick on a rail that you think is almost unpro- impossible. You're like, I think I can do it, but I know this is going to take a like a long ass time. And like you battle it out. And then you finally get it like last day. I actually got it last day, like last hour. And I was like, I don't think I can do this. Like I didn't really like come. Close. Yeah. Boom. It just happened times, but. That's um, so sick. I, I had that happen to me too. I was filming an urban, uh, urban rail and Barry once with Kyle. Not that I'm a big urban skier. I've done a lot of urban skiing. I did. I had one season where I watched a bunch of, uh, step videos and I got went through a phase. I'm like, I'm not competing anymore. I'm done. I'm just going to ski urban. And we were hitting this urban rail and I had been trying to do a super fed on it for like probably like two hours and two, three hours. And it wasn't even anywhere close. And then like the cop, a cop literally rolled up and like parked and he was just getting out of his car and I laced it that run. And then he no, kicked us out. But- literally the exact time, like the last hit, he kicked us out like right, right as I landed the trick. And I was I'd never been more stoked. It was like the perfect timing. So that, that, that was pretty sick. And oh, that sounds like a dream. <laughs> it was like a dream. I was also like, wasn't expecting it to happen at all. Yeah. Um. So did they? You guys did jump shoots or anything? Did they build a special park set up for it, or was it like just uh, kind of use what was there? They left it pretty much the same. I didn't jump like at all because yeah. I would beat. Um. But um, they were rowing down. Um. Yeah, I'm sure all the other girls can do the jumps and whatnot, but you'll hold down the rails for all of us, which is <laughs> which is what I like to see. Um, so that, dude, I, that, go ahead. I was, actually, I've started to get into jumps more, and I, like, really, like, learned to, like, love them. Cause, like, I used to, like, always be so scared. Like, I used to be hitting my pants going before into, like, and Before or after ACL? Um, just this year, basically. Okay, so, getting, yeah. Yeah, and I get more comfortable with them, and I really like the feeling, and just like, oh, I feel so good, and I didn't, like, want to get, definitely this summer, like, get, like, up there, I don't know. A lot of PC bag time? Yeah, PC bag time. <laughs> I mean, I've done, this is my place to maximize we all got, and uh, this is where I'm going to start putting in the work whenever I'm not working, because I got to work a lot to for my comp season next year, because I'm going to try to do a full comp season, but... Oh, yeah. um, but uh, yeah, no, as much time as I can spend here in the bag, like I will. I know there's a lot of people that are against their bags. I don't know how you feel about them, but like obviously like if everybody else wasn't using an airbag, I'd be fine with it. But when there's that many people using an airbags and stuff, you can't keep up without it. You Like you just can't. Quick intermission, guys. I got this Rebel fridge literally for the podcast and for being a badass human being, I guess. I think they just like how good I look. But, um, but as you guys can see, I have a huge influx of Red Bull. There's almost like, I have over 100 Red Bull at this point. It's getting ridiculous. If you guys want a free signed Red Bull, like this one here, shipped right to your door. All you gotta do is leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify Podcasts. Say whatever you want. Tell me something you liked about the podcast. Something, tell me something you didn't like, but tell me a funny story for all I care. Write a badass review and uh, you'll be entered in the chance to win some free signed Red Bull. I gotta get rid of it, guys. This is the best way I know how. Back to the show. Exactly. And you can't keep up safely without it. Like, mm-hmm. I don't, I can do, I'm sure if I go toss a right triple, I can probably land on my feet, but I'm going to feel a lot better if I do about 10 or 15 of them on an airbag to my feet first. Exactly. <laughs> like, a really lot love- better. Yeah. And I did a lot of bagging last year and I came to maximize and I had like, within the first week on snow, I think this year, I learned four-way dub 14s. And like, oh, and my first week on snow this year, I didn't have a single one. First week on snow, all the way for dub 14s. And like, I did a lot of them on bag, but like to transition from, to have a transition that like over that easily was pretty, like I was pretty stoked on it. Yeah, that's pretty impressive, honestly. Yeah, but we didn't have any comps this year. I didn't get to compete once. I put worked my ass off. I put so much time at it. Not a single comp, no comps in Canada, no norms, no COTs. So that was a big, big bummer. Actually- it's just gonna be a sick season. Yeah, I'm ready to come in and flame everybody next year. That's my plan. I'm a nice guy. I love everybody in the ski community, but I really like to win. <laughs> I, li- I really like to win. So yeah, it, it is good. what it is. It does feel good. Yeah, it feels great. Um, what's your plans for next season? Olympics are coming up. I don't know if that's something you've thought about. 
You got and, the first World Cup starts. I mean, it's obviously like something. I don't know what the girls scene for the U.S. teams like, but is that something that's on your mind, or what does that look like? You're looking a couple years ahead. It's on your mind, yeah. It'd be sick. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of developed this mindset. It's actually really helped me progress a lot. Like hard to explain, but like the trick is possible. A lot of people can do it. Like why can't? What like, kind of like why can't I? Kind of like like. Yes. Uh, that's helped me a lot, and I think I definitely want to learn some dub this summer. I definitely really want to try. I mean, it's been my little nine-year-old's dream ever since. <laughs> there's no harm in just trying. No, there's no uh, harm in trying at all. And yeah. as long as you put a lot of work in, like, like either, yeah. way, either way, it doesn't matter. You're going to get better at skiing. Like, say it's something exactly. that doesn't quite happen, oh, well, like, you're very, you're, like, you're still young. You have a lot of, like, I mean, four years is, like, a long time, who knows, but, like, Four years, like eight years, like that's there's two more possible ones easily. So that yep. that's super sick. And yep. double right. doubles next year will be sick too. I want to see that. I'm gonna hold you to that. Dude, I almost did one last week. Oh my god. At Mammoth. The, yeah. So I so this man texted me. This he, man. <laughs> he was like, um, it, I posted a video of me and my story just eating shit and like doing cork seven in slow mo. And he was like, dude, that could so go dub town. And I was like, could it? <laughs> so the next day, the next two days, I landed ten, dub ten, and I was like, oh my god, like I gotta do this now. But then the weather, like, uh, it was like forty miles an hour. Yeah, that's 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 a little excessive. And those are times when you you like decide just it's probably smarter to be safe. And like exactly. that's something I realized. I like I like to send a lot, but. Mm-hmm. I kind of call it a safe send is my my word I've been using. There's a point where it's like it makes sense, and there's a point where it doesn't. Exactly. And like the biggest thing that holds you back is injuries. So like if you ACL yourself, knock on wood, you yeah. know how it feels. I don't yet, knock on wood. But <laughs> if it happens, like it's almost a full year, and that's a lot of time to gain back and catch up to other people, or other people have to catch up to you, which is. Yeah, and it's hard to come back from things like that. So it's it's yeah. smart. And like, have you ever tried any on bag? Or obviously, you've done a couple on bag, or not much. Dubs. Yeah, dub tens. Yeah, I the first time I tried one was in Mammoth, and the next day I saw one and it felt so good. Was there a bag at Mammoth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sick. Okay, so then that that's a good way to tr- like to uh, test it out because you go right straight from bag to snow. But yeah. yeah. Like you got a whole, you got a whole summer to do it. I want to see some of that style get brought to the jumping side of skiing for the women. That'll be really, really sick. I want to yeah. see some like nice cork nines, tweak blunts, some sick stuff like that. Um, that would be super, super dope. I'm just trying to make sure my camera's on. Like, I swear to God, this is the best podcast you'll ever be on. But we have technical issues because I'm not a camera guy. I'm actually. Yeah. Thank you. I, I feel like I'm doing great. I'm actually very tired, great. but I'm really enjoying this this interview. It's nice. It's nice to catch up because, like, like I said, we haven't talked in a long, long time. Like, yeah. obviously, we didn't talk too, too much beforehand, but, like, yeah. So, it, it's sweet. And so, again, like, we we're talking about Olympics next year, um, something that you're on that's on your mind. And, uh, like, I don't know what the scene, comp scene is going to be like. Obviously, they're going to be, like, pretty full comp next year. Do you have a spot yeah. to all the World Cups, or like, or is that like still kind of up in the air? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, to, but I'm pretty sure. To the majority of them, at least, yeah. yeah. So, like, is, is if you show up to a, um, like three or four World Cups and you do good, like, there's a potential for something like that happening, which would be insane. Um, I'm rooting for you. I hope you beat Megan in the Olympics if you make it. That's my that's my goal. We don't no, like we don't like Megan on this podcast. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding, but that would be really sick to see you there. I'm actually going to try to hit a ride with Megan because I want to go down and check it out, see what it's all about down there, and then I also want to go power skiing. So Ooh, yeah. that's uh, that's my watch Megan and uh, do after. But who, who knows what happens? Like Megan's still up in the air. Everything's still up in there. It's kind of a crazy sport now that's in the Olympics. It's really changed like a lot of things. Um, but it, it's cool to see. So next year, your plan is to focus solely on – parks or uh, comp skiing or do you want to do some sort of filming and stuff in between because you've done a lot of filming this year and it would be sick to do see you do some filming next year like i would love to see like a like a, a actual like five to ten minute project that i think that would be super dope 
Agree. Yeah. I would love to uh, definitely get in the street. You want to get in the streets? I have so I had so much fun. I like I went a couple times this year and I had so much really? fun. Really? I was like, oh fuck, I'm just kidding. I'm doing this. That's but, what my dad. I don't know. I'm so why not do both and like, oh, it's so fun, man. Dude, I I think you'd be great for the streets. I think it'd be perfect. Obviously, next year's not really a street year with the Olympics and everything, but. Maybe get in a bit, break yourself yeah. off in the streets of the day, but like a couple weeks before, that'd be the worst. Um, but anyways, yeah, that'd be that'd be really sick to see. And like obviously, like projects. I don't know. Do you have any interest in backcountry at all? Or um, I've never really done it. Like this year was my first year, like like real powder. <laughs> yeah. Did he, um, I had a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I've never really like had an opportunity. Like it's about and like stuff. But I definitely, like, like try. Interested, yeah, yeah. Like, it's not something, like, for me, I haven't skied a lot of backcountry. I don't, I, every time I've skied backcountry, I've had pow skis on, or park skis on, so it's not like I've actually <laughs> skied backcountry. It's not the same thing. But, like, all my friends, is like, when I went and lived with uh, my friends Zach and Jake and a bunch of other people in Whistler this year for a month, uh, when Ontario went to lockdown, and they all have their avalanche safety courses and stuff and touring setups and, uh, I kind of tagged along for a couple things here and there, and it, it was pretty cool. Like I got, I got to admit, like I, I, I enjoyed it a lot. So, really? Yeah. Yeah. It, I could like sessioning like a power jump out. Be like, oh. Dude, oh. I feel like you can literally a power jump is like doing something in the airbag. Like it, if it's deep enough, how you can just toss yourself. Like I bring me out to a power jump. I'm gonna do a trip sixteen. I'm gonna land switch. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ride out whatsoever. I'm gonna switch tomahawk about a hundred kilometers an hour, but that's okay. It would be perfect shot. Yeah, it'd be super funny too. Hopefully one day. I'll do that. Yeah, for sure. It'd be super sick. I'm gonna get a touring setup next year and get my uh, AST and stuff. But I don't know how much time I'll have to do it if I'm gonna do as many comps as possible. We'll see if everything opens up again. Like. Yeah, I hope so, man. It's starting to here. Um, and pretty bad. Like about. Um, yeah. With like Louis, Louis. I heard that Louis was closed a lot. Yeah, it was closed a lot. That's why I went down to Quebec and stuff. But I felt really bad for all the people like Braden, Wilmot, and all those guys. Like they didn't like, they didn't ski for like almost a month and a bit throughout the entire course of the winter, which is like really depressing for a lot of those guys because they're like not in their prime, but they're like coming up and like they have a like yeah, they, they really have a lot good. of skiing. To, yeah, they're really good. And they have a lot of skiing to do to like to uh, keep improving on. And they're improving so fast, but they didn't have a lot of time to like actually do that this year. So. I think I did two trips with Brayden and one with Charlie came down with me and Brayden and we went and skied maximized together. It was super sick to see those guys shred like for yeah. like how young they are. Like they pick them up so quick and it's fun yeah. to hang out with them. I miss it a bit for sure. Well, that's quick introduction on the podcast here. Yield Pod needs a break because I'm plugging another sponsor, man. Medistick has been huge for me. Guys, if you don't know what Medistick is, get on it. Medistick has... What well the one product that I like the best and literally the strongest topical cream. One sec, I actually have it here for the guys watching on the video. It's in my MMA bag. I've been using it literally every day because I'm just getting absolutely wrecked. This one right here is literally the best pain relief stick in the game. It is legit the strongest thing you can buy in the Canadian market and like it lights me up to the point where I just go numb and I love it. If you guys smoke weed, good on ya. But this, this will do the same effect but you won't get the munchies if you're trying to cut weight or something like that, you know? Either way, Medistick, guys. I've been using Medistick for the last month. They're not paying me or anything at all. They just sent me some product, let me test it out, see what I thought, and we're gonna go from there. Guys, I'm promoting it because the shit really works and it's helped me out a lot, okay? If you guys wanna get 10% off your Medistick orders from here on out, use the coupon code THEKID, all caps, uh, on checkout. There's also a link down below that I'll leave in the show notes. So yeah, guys, if you're looking for uh, something like A535 on steroids, I would highly suggest Medistick. Okay, well, what do you see in the future for yourself in, in terms of skiing? Like, I've been asking people this question on my podcast, um, kind of wrapping up the podcast, but like, where do you see yourself in five years from now? And that's a question that a lot of people have a hard time answering, but um, I'd like to know what your thoughts on that are. Because like for me, like in terms of five years from now, I have like roughly my idea. I'll, I'll give you a look. I'll ease you into it, okay? So for me, five years from now, I want to be punching people in the face in the UFC. You know, I want to roll up, rock some kid, big UFC crowd, and then I want to go next week, X Games, and like 
rock some jumps and do some whatever we're doing at that point, like quads or something. Um, that's a perfect world for me. But for you, five years from now, what, what do you think Bella will be up to? Or what do you see going on? I have no idea. But um, I hope that I end up in the streets a lot. Um, and definitely, like, I feel like my jumps would be a lot better because for this sure. year I actually, like, got comfortable with jumps. And, like, oh, it felt so good. It's so good, man. I feel like you're like, somebody that picks up really quick on tricks and stuff like that. So, like, if you spend – yeah, no worries. I'm a nice person. <laughs> but, like, if you spend a little bit of time, even over the summer, and, like, just hitting more jumps throughout the winter, like, you'll be picking up on it, like, really quick. Yeah, well, it's all mm-hmm, – even, yeah. like, look in mind. Like, that's all it is, basically. And, like, it's all, like, visualization, just the feeling. And just more time I have with that, like, the better I'll – yeah. yeah, for sure. So, like, for me, this last season, I got, like, not really into uh, meditating and stuff, like, visualization. And I visualized my comp runs, like, probably, like, a hundred times before I did it. Like, fully visualized it, like, two times on the chairlift up, like, before I drop in, like, at night, like, 30, 20 times, 23 times. And, like, I didn't mess up. I messed up comp runs, but I landed the comp run I wanted to in every contest. Uh, qualities and finals like every contest so I went like 100 for 100 on like landing my ideal comp run at every event last year and I think like 89% of that or 90% or whatever 69% however much you want to say was literally due to visualization like I wouldn't wouldn't stop visualizing my comp run or something like that until I like did it perfectly where I locked like in my mind I locked onto the rail perfectly came out perfectly like everything like that and until I did that like five or six times easy, like before I kept, like before I'd even like think about moving on. And I think that helped a lot. And I think you're right. Like, and for me, like for right stuff, like spinning to the right is my unnatural way or, or unnatural way. But yeah, exactly. I think most people are like that. But I've started telling myself that like, there's no such thing as an unnatural way. It's just right or left. And like, yeah. you know, we said about like, hey, if other people can do this, why can't I do this? Right. So, but yeah. I, I've been like, if I can do this to the left, why can't I do it to the right? There's nothing different about it. It's the exact same thing. And that thing helped, that helped me a lot with uh, tricks, like in terms of like jumping and doubles and stuff like that. Like if I can do a dub 12 mute to the left, what's the difference of doing it to the right? It's the exact same, same grab, same set. Yeah. And I think that's something that a lot of people like, kind of not neglect, but a lot of people don't like take visualization and stuff like that super seriously in skiing. I think it's something that can help a lot of people. Yeah. It's, I, it's one of like the most, things like in skiing because like you can throw a trick like and just like not like by like tucking your body yeah you land it sometimes but like if you really just like feel like the motion in your brain and stuff mm-hmm. so like it's pretty, yeah. it, but it's hard it's hard to like going like yeah for sure visualizing something properly is super hard yeah super hard super I hard agree. And, like, I don't know if you've heard this, but there's been a bunch of studies on visualization and stuff like that. Um, and, like, I'm not an expert. And most of the stuff on my podcast, I say on my podcast is bullshit. And it's not to be taken as, like, knowledge or actual advice. But from what I understand or from what I've read and heard, like, they've taken studies of people doing, like, free throws, right? So they, they had a group of people that did, like, literally all day when practice free throws. Practice free throws. Ugh. And uh, then they had the other group of people, same amount of people, they just visualized themselves shooting free, for, free throws. And the people that visualized got just as good or better than the people that actually shot free throws all day. And, like, there's been studies that say, like, if you can visualize something just as good, like, like really, really well, it's, like, 70 to 85% as effective as, like, actually doing it. Yeah. So, it's not, and it's something that, like, it doesn't, like... Obviously, it's hard to do, but it doesn't take, like, physical strain on your body. Like, if you go out and just smash jumps all day, big jumps, and you go out and do that, like, I don't know about you, but I, my, my body's fucked up. <laughs> I get home, and I'm like, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm cooked. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, because you're throwing, like, the most state of ever. <laughs> yeah, like, you do, like, like 10 to 20 doubles a day, and you, like, that, in, even that impact, like, especially with shark fins, I, like, I'm sure you've hit a couple of them. Dude, that shit hurts, man. Like, yeah, I know. You just go straight up, and then the landing never matches the shark fin for how high I, how high you go, and you just go, Doof, and you just get crunched. And like, man, my, my back doesn't like that. Even in the in the summer when I trampoline a lot, like, cause I have a trampoline, and yeah, and I, I spend like like at least an hour to two hours on it a day. My lower back and everything just gets like it, oh kills, God, man, it, just from all the compression. I think, but yeah, trampoline kills my body 
so bad. Probably more than jumping, honestly. I would uh, say so, yeah. I think it's it's pretty aggressive. I mean, super tramps I find are a little better, mm-hmm. but still, still sucks. So, <laughs> I guess let's recap that. Five years from now, what are you saying? Obviously, jumps are going to be better. More in the streets. What yeah. else? Uh, are we gonna see? A, are we gonna see like a full? Do you want to be part of like any movies or stuff like ski movies, something like that? Are you gonna be? Sure. Yeah, that that'd be <laughs> sick. Yeah, are you, is con- contest skiing something you want to like do for that long, or is that something you want to start to transition out after like a couple of years? Uh, yeah, I mean, long like I mentally go, but like for me, like right now is like really fun. Like, yeah, it's just like a good stuff. And stuff. Um, yeah. Okay. But yeah, hopefully I'll still like be doing that stuff. I just hope to go to one Olympic where I die. Uh, I think you got that in the bag. Don't worry. This little nine-year-old Bella in her dream. <laughs> you want to know what my dream is? Mm. To get more X Games medals than Megan. <laughs> that's my. That's all my list. I write it down. She's at three, and now I got to get four. And I'm also very behind the curve at this point in time. <laughs> but, but pretty but, legendary. Yeah, well, that my my goal is just to beat Megan, as as a lovely loving sibling rivalry. But oh yeah, <laughs> it is what it is what it is. But that no, that's super sick. And what other like I mean, like I said, I like we know each other pretty well. But what other interests do you have like other outside of skiing? Like I'm not, I'm like genuinely just curious. Um, honestly, like yeah, skiing is my favorite thing of all time. Like I could do it twenty four seven all the time. Um. But, yeah, <laughs> just, like, dealing with people. Um, I got into biking a lot. I love biking. Um, I downhill used to biking? What's that? Downhill? Um, I want to get into downhill really bad. Um, hopefully at Woodward, they have that. I hope to do that. But I just got a new electric assist mountain nice. bike. Nice. Riffing on it. <laughs> Dude, those, some of those things rip. Some of those things go fast. I saw Dude, a video I, today. The other week, I think I went to, like, Park City from Salt Lake. Like, it was, like, super sick. Like, really? Like, yeah, super easy, so too? Hmm? Super easy, too, eh? Like... No. Because <laughs> there's a lot of, like, insane hills. And, like, mainly it's all uphill, and then you cruise down. That's usually how the are But But um, they're so fun and just, like, really fun. Um, but I don't skateboard as much as I... Um, but, yeah. Skateboarding, yeah? Sick. That's super dope. Cool. Well, I'm going to wrap the podcast up here. All right, so that was the show with Bella Bacon, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Me and Patty will be back. Podcast pack will be back with another podcast episode soon. I have a lot of exciting podcasts coming up. I have a lot of exciting podcasts filmed, and they're going up soon. I've been in fight camp, like I said, uh, skiing, working like a nine to five every day, construction. So I've been super busy. So the podcasts haven't been pumped out as fast. But I already have a podcast with Connor Ralph filmed, being edited right now. The man Steve Steep, over 80k on YouTube. The guy's an animal. Then we got Eileen Gu, possibly the sexiest girl on skis at the moment. No cap. Uh, in Vogue magazines, she's actually Victoria's Secret model now, guys. If you didn't know, it's big stuff, right? So we got huge guests coming on the podcast, and um, we're gonna keep growing it as well as we go on. Let me know uh, down below in the comments on YouTube if you're watching it on YouTube. And let me know in the reviews down below as well. Uh, who you want to see on the podcast next, you guys can DM me as well. And if you guys want to be featured in the next episode of the podcast, all you got to do is post a picture of the episode you're watching on Instagram. And tag me or the ASC in it. That way I know you sent it. Otherwise, I won't I won't see it, guys. So yeah, share it on Instagram. Tag me or the ASC in it. And you'll get a shout out at the beginning of the next podcast episode. So that's exciting, guys. <coughs> So yeah, guys, on to bigger, better things. The lightning bolt is fully attached on the knee. We're coming in hot into another episode of Banged Up with Bruce Oldham. Deuces.